What's up, everybody? This is another edition of This Week at Omnia, where we identify the hot bite and the hot baits that are happening all over the country using fishing reports submitted by you, our customers and ambassadors. First off, we got a killer fishing report from our buddy Adrian Urso fishing Kentucky Lake during the winter months. So you got some cold water conditions and he identified the fish were feeding on some crayfish. So he used crayfish patterned crankbaits fishing pretty, pretty mid-level depth water, like seven to 12 foot of water. So he's using a Spro rock crawler. That was his hot bait, the 55 size, and probably backed it up a little with the smaller one because he also identified he was using the DD50 as well, both in that kind of red craw pattern, which is always a killer cold water color red crawfish it just for some reason gets bit in the spring like crazy all over the country up north down south so he's using that crankbait he's parallel paralleling steep banks fishing rock but making his cast parallel to the steep or steeper banks and running that crankbait along the bottom there and getting some big large mouth to bite so thank you very much for identifying the hot bait and what bite was going on there on kentucky lake during the winter months Next up, we got two reports from Jeremy Harkins out in Kentucky Lake as well, also during that winter time frame. One for smallmouth, one for largemouth. Gotta love that. Thanks for hooking us up with a report for both species, my two favorite species. The largemouth seemed like they were going on the umbrella rig, which makes a lot of sense. Winter time, the umbrella rig is a big bite getter. It's a great way to target fish during those Oh, cold winter months, he was fishing brush piles, targeting fish that were foraging in on that wintertime shad. So he was using the uh, Yumbrella rig from, uh, from Yum, the Flash Mob Jr., using some Kitech fat impacts on it, some uh, 3 8 He was also using some of the Strike King Rage Swimmers. So you see that a lot with people who are using an umbrella rig where they'll switch up the different uh, kinds and brands of swim baits on their umbrella rigs, yeah, whether on the same rig or rigs with different types. Because that little changes in subtle action and stuff like that will key some fish in. So thanks for that report, uh, killer report for wintertime fishing on Kentucky Lake there. If you want to go catch a big bucket head, Listen to Jeremy and get that A-rig and get out there uh, around some brush piles and, and wind it around. Next up, he was giving us some tips on some smallmouth fishing, uh, hard jerk baits around stumps. So some submerged timber, so it looks like maybe just some stumps that are, uh, that are, that are under the water there, that he was fishing that jerk bait around. Uh, Vision 110 plus one, I think the best jerk bait on planet earth right there. That 110 plus one's my favorite in that mega bass family, it casts far and suspends, but he also was using the, the Rappala Shadow Wrap Deep and an albino sh sh uh, shiner color and the Janko 110 suspending. That's the first one I've seen come across on a fishing report for us. Uh, that's one that I don't own that now I gotta buy. Thanks a lot, Jeremy. But uh, looks like he was getting really, really erratic action or slow pauses. So look, that's a common theme you hear from really good jerkbait anglers that they change up their presentation quite a bit. Just doing the jerk, jerk pause thing every time the jerkbait is not the best way to do it. If you're confident with your jerkbait, you'll change up that presentation cast after cast so you key in what they're biting on. And it looks like he was doing both. Uh, obviously, he was throwing an A-rig as well this time of year, like he was talking about for his large mouth presentations, but it looks like those small mouth are keying more in on the jerk bait and that suspending jerk bait, which makes a lot of sense. Sounds like Jeremy's got Kentucky Lake dialed in in these winter months. Thanks for the tips on the hot bite or hot baits and the hot bite there in Kentucky Lake, Jeremy. Something we like to do here at This Week at Amia is talk about our best selling baits for that week. So Jacob, we asked our buyer what was selling this week so we could identify the bite just based off sales, not necessarily fishing reports. And so far this week, we had the Damiki Vault Blade coming on, up on top and also the Rapala DT6. We like to call this one one of the cold water, cold water heroes from Rapala. Uh, every year in the cold water months, this, you see this DT6 start to fly. And we're all big blade bait fans here because we live where it's really, really cold all the time up in Minnesota. But all over the country right now, except for the rare exceptions of like Southern Florida and around some of the Southern regions of the country. Most of the country's in cold weather patterns right now. So that Demiki Vault blade is a killer. This is in fact the blade bait that's caught me my biggest fish on a blade bait. But I wanted to give you a couple options if we don't have a color that you're after or you wanna round out your assortment with these cold water crankbaits or blade baits. Numbers wise, this Molex Trago blade bait 
this thing's a killer. I've caught a lot of fish on this bait right here. It's a little smaller, a little bit more subtle. I don't think I've gotten as big a bites as you can get with that Domeki Vault Blade, so this is still my favorite. But if you're looking for something to switch it up, check out that Molox Trago. And this one's a real sneaky one. Wolf Tackle, big, heavy ones. And no one's really, as far as the bass world goes, I haven't seen these around very often. We've met these folks, they're really cool people, and they make some really heavy, heavy blade baits that are not that big. So you can get these in real uh, deep, really fast. You cast them 100 miles probably, and uh, they're gonna get big because they're not too big. And also for the DT6 family, to round that out for other, some other cold water crankbait options, you got the little chick magnet from Strike King, and you got the MR6 from Bill Lewis here. Both plastic options for cold water cranks. So there you go. Those are some hot baits going right now around the country in these cold weather months. All right, we're checking in with you post the big event over the weekend with the Okeechobee tournament down there in Florida. And we saw things play out exactly kind of the way we thought they'd play out where you saw people capitalizing on that pre and post spawn fish and some people doing some hunkering down, probably trying to find some of those bed fish. I don't think we saw a ton of actual sight fishing, but they were fishing areas that they keyed in on that were fish were actively spawning. And you saw something play out with the flipping bite where you got something like this X-Zone Adrenaline Craw. We saw Brandon Polinick and anglers using similar flipping style baits to this, this creature style bait that's kind of sort of that beaver style with more action to them. They have the flipping style appendages on the claws. So they have a little bit more action when you're flipping them around. They paddle and kick because they have these flanges on the end. And then you also saw some anglers uh, capitalize on some of those negative fish with a more subtle presentation like the Reactions Innovation Sweet Beaver. So you don't get as much action out of this bait, but you're getting those same fish uh, that maybe in the same areas that weren't actively feeding keying in on this style of flipping bait. So both styles of flipping baits played there where you have low action, then you have high action baits. And then uh, the staple of Florida, you saw the stick bait shine. Uh, we saw other tournaments get one down in Florida this week for the stick bait, but you can't beat the Sanko style stick baits uh, in Florida any time of the year, but especially right now, they're, they're shining down there. We saw a lot of fish get caught on that. Probably the number one uh, theme of the event was the whole jackhammer here. Black Blue seemed to be a player for a lot of anglers in those big congregated areas that are just winding around and uh, areas where fish were kind of in all three phases of the spawn. You saw the jackhammer play. And then you saw Mr. Tyler Rivette take down the tournament and he claims 80% of his fish came off the Berkeley Stunna there. So he was using his forward facing sonar and using a jerk bait. Even though we saw the Florida Staples come out and play here, you're seeing this jerk bait and forward facing sonar show up all year long now with forward facing sonar. So uh, kudos to Tyler Rivette. And if you're after any of these baits, they're all in stock now. And thanks for filing your fishing reports and letting us know about what's going on with a bite down in Florida.